call to order the virtual meeting of city council for May 18th, 2020. Clerk, uh, first we're gonna say the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody please rise. After me, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America. and to, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Benutis? Here. Blue Hardy? Here. Mizak? Here. Rhodes? Here. Saunders? Here. Kochi? Here. Thanks. Here. Uh, before we go to the minutes, uh, Mike, you want to give out our uh, email for contacting for at the uh, hearing of the citizens part? Uh, yes. Anybody that for any questions or comments can send those to city manager at bedfordoh.gov. That's city manager at bedfordoh.gov. Good. And council, you have the minutes of the work session of May 4th, 2020. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance? By Heather, Heather Rhodes, second by Vic. Clerk, call the roll, please. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Bonder? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And Council, you have the minutes of the regular meeting of May 4th, 2020. Any corrections or changes to that? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Mizak, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Lou Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Under old business, resolution number 2548-20. A resolution declaring the necessity to improve certain streets in the city of Bedford, Ohio, by lighting the same and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension, please. By Rhodes, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Pink? Yes. We just have a little technical uh, issue with our city hall. Uh, whoop, it's all done. Gone. Do I have a motion for third and final? By Spinks, second by uh, uh, Mizak? I'll take that. Um, yes. The uh, resolutions and ordinances A through F this evening are all related to our 2021 uh, tax and budget and tax budget. A uh, couple of highlights in regards to all this so I can address that right now. We won't have to repeat ourselves. Uh, the street lighting will drop from 1.6 mils to 1.5 mils. And uh, that's what we're voting on tonight, as well as the levying for assessment of refuse fees it will remain at the $14 uh, per month. Uh, so I ask council to approve all the resolutions and ordinances A through F. Uh, we also will be able to collect our advances in, in, in advance for the taxes. And when we get to the uh, tax budget, the three reasons are to allow them to uh, authorize our property tax rates and to receive receive local government funds and to establish our certificate estimated resources, which is the total amount that we could uh, spend up to when we start looking at our budget in 2021. Uh, so I ask council to look favorably on A through F this evening. And um, if you have any questions as we go through, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. 
Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Benudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Orange is number 9778-20. An ordinance determined to proceed with the improvement of certain streets in the city of Bedford, Ohio, by lighting the same and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension. A road, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Bezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Coach Yes. Sink? Yes. And a motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Fluharty. Uh, and Frank already explained all these, so uh, call the roll, please. Canudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And Sphinx? Yes. Ordinance number 9779-20. Being an ordinance levying special assessments for the improvement of the street and public uh -huh. places of the city of Bedford, Ohio, by lighting of the same in accordance with resolution number 2548-20 and ordinance number 9778-20 and declaring an emergency. And I would ask for a suspension by Rhodes, second by Sphinx. Clerk, call the roll, please. Genutis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And ordinance number 97. Pardon? So should third. We do third. Oh, we had the third. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have a motion for it. Do we have a motion for that? No. Okay, no. we need a motion for third and final by Sphinx, second by Janudis. Uh, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Okay, now. 9780-20, an ordinance to levy assessments for the expense of garbage refuge collection, recycling and disposable, disposal within the city of Bedford, Ohio during the tax year 2020 and collected in 2021 and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension. A Sphinx, second by Rhodes. Clerk, call the roll, please. Benudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sink? Yes. And a motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Flu Hardy. Uh, this is for the uh, Mike, you want to take that? Actually, that's the uh, refuse fee, refuse that's $14. Fee, yes. It'll right. remain the same for, for this year as next year. Right, thank you. No problem. Clerk, call the roll, please. Judith? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? No. Kochi? Yes. And Sphinx? Yes. 
Resolution number 2549-20. A resolution approving and accepting the proposed 2020 tax budget for the year January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. By Spink, second by Janunas. Clerk, call the roll. Janunas? Yes. Lou Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. And a motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Rhodes. Um, Frank, I know you touched on it. You want to? Uh, we addressed that earlier. Basically, the three reasons uh, why the tax budget's passed uh, to allow property tax rates established, getting the local government funds, whereas this year with federal dollars being distributed based on that, that becomes important. And also with the certificate estimated resources being established for our city for the maximum amount of uh, dollars uh, that will be allowed to be appropriated and spent for next year. Thank you. Any questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Renudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Oh, did I mess this up again? Mm -hmm. That was 2550, correct? Uh, 2549. We're on 2550 now. Oh, okay, I got it. Resolution number 2550 20, being a resolution requesting the county fiscal officer to advance taxes from the proceeds of tax levies for the year 2020 collected in 2021 pursuant to section 321.34 of the revised code of the state of Ohio in declaring an emergency. We can have a motion for suspension. By Hardy, second by Rhodes. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Hardy. Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And a motion for third and final by Spink, second by Janudis. Uh, and Frank? Yeah, yeah, this resolution is to allow the county uh, fiscal officer, as they collect the tax dollars, to distribute those to the city of Effort early versus waiting till the final collection process. Gives us a couple <clears throat> extra months of cash flow and uh, and to our benefit. So I ask council to pass that this evening. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Thanks. Okay. We done with that one? Go to ordinance number 9786-20. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a proposal with the GPD group for professional engineering services for sanitary sewer flow metering and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension by Mizak, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And motion for third and final by Spink, second by Fluharty. And uh, Mike. 
Thank you, Stan. Um, this these uh, this fee or these con this contract is obviously above and beyond our normal contract with with GPD. Um, we are required when I say we the city. Uh, we are required to prepare a no feasible alternative analysis um, for the EPA that was part of our renewal permit. Um, and that no, that uh, NFA analysis is in regards to rainfall derived inflow and infiltration to our plant at the wastewater. Um, what that this analysis entails is the installation of uh, 20 plus meters throughout the city that will um, analyze and obviously attract data or compile data um, during heavy rainfalls. Um, obviously now is the perfect, perfect time to get these installed. We did reach out uh, to see if we can uh, research uh, obtaining additional quotes uh, for these flow meters. And we did, provide, we did find two consultants that provide a similar service. One of them was MS Consultants and the other is ACOM. Uh, MS Consultants just started providing uh, this service with the meters in 2019. Uh, they only own 20 of them. And, obvious, and obviously um, uh, um, aren't able to provide what, we're, what we need to do. Um, ACON has, has over 150 um, and they work in various states. Um, instead of hiring ACOM, actually working with GPD, we would secure a lower rate. Um, and it's our uh, recommendation that we go continue to plan to go with chief Mike you're uh, we're losing you again Mike um, <laughs> to get these meet up. sorry give me the thumbs down if it doesn't work <laughs> we're trying <laughs> sorry um, so it, it, obviously it's the administration's recommendation that we go with GPD. Uh, it, it would be a lower rate than going with ACOM directly. Um, and we'd like to get these meters installed sooner than later, um, especially during the rainy season, so we can get the best data possible. And we can include that in, in our NFA analysis. Um, that's going to help us determine uh, not only five-year, but a 10-year plan for wastewater improvements. Okay, thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Anudis? Yes. Sue Hardy? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Pinks? Yes. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, reports. And Mr. Surdy, city manager, Mike. Thank you, Stan. Um, and again, if I cut out, I apologize. Um, just give me the thumbs down. <laughs> um, first off, I, I want to um, thank the Bedford Garden Club. Um, they had sent, I, I believe it actually came to uh, Mayor Kochi and myself um, for the generous donation to, my screen just went black. So we can still hear you. Okay, I, I don't we know what's hear going you. on. Okay. I, hear you. I just want to thank the Garden yeah. Club for the, for the generous donation. Um, for uh, We utilized and um, purchased flowers. Uh, some of those are going on the Union Street Bridge, and they were installed today, so thank you. Um, I wanted to provide a friendly reminder that our annual Shred Day is still taking place on May 30th. But again, there's gonna be some restrictions. Um, for those that plan on coming, please place your items in the trunk. You will not be allowed to exit your vehicle um, and only the um, representatives from the company will be able to get that stuff out of your trunk to shred. So um, bear with us, but we are still having the, the uh, shred day. Um, Quick announcement that the Sunoco, the, uh, that long project, uh, they finally opened at Turney um, and Lee, and Mazda of Bedford is open. They moved in over the weekend and they are open today. So two good projects that came to completion. Um, our staff has been busy. We've applied for various grants. Uh, Recreation Department applied for a grant through AARP for um, uh, improvements to the center and programming. 
Um, Jennifer Kuzma applied for a large grant through the Office of Criminal Justice Services for um, future um, cleaning supplies, cleaning services, and a lot of other items uh, that we can possibly utilize in trying to keep, obviously, our facilities and staff, but the public uh, healthy and safe. So our, we've been extremely busy with this. Um, if uh, Quick update on the Illuminating Company. Um, they are starting a project in Bedford. Um, it's not citywide yet, but they're starting in, in certain pods, and they're going to be installing what they call smart meters. So for those of you that are, that are getting mailings, you will receive a mailing. Um, they're taking all the necessary safety precautions, um, but look for that information to be going out um, and you can coordinate the install of those meters uh, later this year. Um, again, we are, as of right now, we are still closed, but our city hall is tentatively scheduled to reopen um, on June 1st. And look for more information that will be coming out later this week and beginning of next week regarding um, some services that we provide, some modifications to those certified uh, modifications to the services, uh, and some other items that will be going out on our website and social media outlets. So again, um, bear with us. We appreciate the cooperation and continue to practice social distancing. And hopefully, we are back to somewhat of a normal in the months ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Law Director, John. Uh, say hello to everybody, but I, I also wanted to let you know that the courts are now uh, starting to reopen, uh, not at full capacity, but we are back to pretty normal. And they are taking precautions to keep everyone safe as well as, as we will be. But the, uh, so, Courts are up and running, and uh, the police are out there patrolling, trying to keep us safe. So, but be safe, everybody. Good, be healthy. And the report. Thank you. And Mike, we have your picture back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Finance director. Frank. Yes, just a couple items. One, uh, just a reminder to keep filing on the tax returns. Uh, keep those coming. Deadline's July 15th. Uh, another item, as I'll address it ahead of time, is the uniform guidance cost principles that we'll be talking about and looking to pass this evening. In line with the federal grants that we receive, there's uh, codes of federal regulations that are requirements of having us uh, keeping policies in line with federal dollars and how to spend those federal dollars uh, versus our own dollars. So we have policies in regards to that we're passing tonight to comply with the uh, federal regulations and their requirements. So I'll be asking council to look favorably on that uh, resolution 25, I believe it's 49 or 51 uh, under the uniform guidance cost principles. Uh, that's the end of my report this evening. Thank you. And council reports. Uh, we will start with uh, Mr. Janudis. Oh, thank you. I just want to hope, uh, I just want to extend my wishes that everyone is well and uh, stay safe. And of course, I'm very looking forward to uh, when we could uh, resume meeting again personally. End of report. Thank you. Mr. Fluharty. Yes, I'd like to wish everybody a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Uh, uh, and also, Mike, I would like to ask, uh, have you had any reports from uh, Villa Hearts or Woodside with our retirement establishments? Anybody uh, come down with any of this virus? Uh, I have not heard of any positive um, cases. We have, as part of our uh, program, we have had our police department reach out um, to all of our assisted living facilities regularly to check in to see if they need anything from us, um, any type of assistance that we could um, provide them. Um, they, for one, they appreciated the city reaching out and being there and just that, that um, um, knowing they can rely on us or in, in need. Um, that went over a long way and our police has continued that communication, but they have not, um, um, from what we've gathered, um, we have not been notified any, of any positive cases to the residents. Um, and it, obviously, if we would hear otherwise, I would um, update council. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and also with uh, 
in my ward, I uh, want to thank a lot of the people cutting their grasses. Uh, it's been pretty good this year so far. Uh, so everybody just keep it up and we get some dry days here. We've got to catch up again. Uh, end of report. Thank you. Mrs. Mizek. Oh, good evening, everybody. It's kind of hard to see you, but I'm glad we're here together. And uh, Mike kind of rolled on my thunder already about the new hop in Sunoco dealership. Uh, gas is a dollar seventy nine there, and they're starting to line up, so the pumps are be starting to become busy. <clears throat> I wanted to say congratulations to the 2020 class senior class of Bedford High School. Uh, we enjoyed the parade by the students. It made a lot of people come to their windows or their front porches that afternoon. And it was quite entertaining. And I hope that we can do more of these things just to let everybody know that we still care about each other and our city's alive and thriving. I observed it uh, Friday afternoon when we had the ban lifted on a few of the merchants in the downtown area. I was down there for about two and a half hours. And uh, the stores were bustling. They were busy. The traffic was good. I know the crosswalk doesn't have any respect in front of U.S. Bank, but someday they'll people will get trained and they will do the right thing before something happens, which we hope never does happen. I do have a question or two from Mike. Since you had visited my new merchant down the street, what is going on with Big and Little? Uh, do we have any idea what is going there beside a grill or something? And also, um, at Colony Club, uh, there was a problem when we had the first big rains last week of uh, a couple of the build, uh, townhouses there getting water and actually wastewater coming into their apartments. Uh, I tried to bring it up to management, but had no cooperation. Yeah, I am the... the um... I, I forgive me if I did not. I thought I included it in the memo. I may not have. Uh, the Big and Little just recently received um, the okay to open from the Board of Health. So that should be imminent. Um, and it's going to kind of be like a, a convenient like it was before. Uh, so that should be in the very near future. Um, they did a lot of work on the building. Um, I've met the owners, very nice people. Um, so we look forward to that. Um, and as far as uh, Colony Club, um, I did not speak to anybody from management. Um, I know Sean checked some of the areas um, over the weekend with the water. Obviously, it was significant. We, we know that. It was a flash flood warning. Um, it was over about a two and a half. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we received about 3.58 inches mm -hmm. of rainwater, which was significant. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, one more question or one more request, and this is, I'm going to support Victor. Your washboard road of Union Street, let's see if we can get some money to take care of that one too this year. Sure. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Rhodes. Thank you. Hello, everyone out there. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm looking at my statistics right now. I see that there are 15 of you out there watching us live. Thank you very much for joining us. I know last council meeting we had 137 people view, which I believe is the record. Um, thank you so much uh, for, for tuning in. And I would like to point out that if you go uh, down below the screen, uh, there is a subscribe button. And you can click on that button and YouTube will let you know when these videos pop up. Uh, and right now we're at 80 subscribers. I'd love to see that get over 100. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that you continue to, uh, to join us for these meetings. Uh, even when we go back to our council chambers, know that these videos will be there and that you can continue watching them from the comfort of your home. You don't have to come to City Hall. <laughs> uh, my next item, uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that the Garden Club uh, is putting on their sale this year, but we're doing it online. Um, it has wrapped up in terms of you get to pick exactly what you want. Uh, we have some leftovers that are still on the website. Uh, you can go to, let's see if I can get it to register. Uh, you can go to bedfordgardenclub.com uh, slash plants dash sale. Uh, and that will take you to our online sale. Uh, we are also selling Girl Scout cookies. 
Uh, we have an, a, a, a local troop here that had bought a, a significant number of cookies to do the booths, and uh, COVID shut everything down right before cookie booth season. So uh, they had extra cookies. We're helping them sell those cookies. If you were unable to get your cookie fix. We have cookies left. Please go to the website and purchase them. Uh, uh, the Garden Club would like everyone to know that gardening is not canceled. <laughs> you can still garden. So, so go to the website. Uh, we, what will happen is if you place an order with us uh, on the online plant sale, uh, next Friday and Saturday, we will deliver those plants to you, uh, to your home. We will leave them on your driveway or your porch, and we will be, uh, um, and you don't have to touch us. Uh, you can choose to pay online or you can choose to pay us uh, when the plants are delivered. We will contact you to arrange a uh, transfer of payment uh, so that you don't have to come in contact with anyone uh, that's delivering. Uh, for the Bedford Downtown Alliance, uh, we are working on, um, uh, unfortunately, our traditional Memorial Day Parade was canceled. Uh, we are very much looking forward to the traditional uh, Memorial Day Parade next year. Uh, this year, though, uh, Bedford Downtown Alliance really wanted to be able to honor our uh, our, our fallen um, soldiers in, in a way that everyone can participate. Uh, so we are creating a virtual uh, Memorial Day Parade. Currently, you can sign up for uh, a slot where uh, one of our videographer, a videographer, not one of, <laughs> our videographer will videotape a message from you and add it to that parade. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable coming out, it is outdoors. We're doing it at the gazebo. Uh, we are scheduling so that we can maintain social distancing. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable even then, you can still send a, a video message to stories at bedforddowntown.org. Uh, and that, uh, that will be added to the parade. And we're hoping to have that uh, available uh, Friday evening, Saturday morning, so that you have all Memorial Day weekend to, uh, to take a look. So we've come up with some fun stuff to put in there. We're not fun. Uh, it's um, interesting things. Uh, we found some interesting uh, references to, um, you know, war uh, memorials and that kind of thing that we're going to be including. Uh, for the first Fridays, uh, we will be having our next first Friday, but not in person. Uh, we have, we are, are going to be hiring a DJ who will be doing a Zoom uh, dance party. Uh, my son participated in one of these for his school. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, typically, they could take up to 500 uh, different uh, people into a party. Everybody's at home. Uh, we all dance at home. We all see each other. We play games. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we will also be offering, uh, we are working on trying to offer drive-by meals so that, uh, you know, uh, during our traditional First Fridays, you can come and get a burger or get a hot dog, a bag of chips, a drink, and, uh, and enjoy the fun. Uh, what we're going to be offering is a drive-by where you can pick up, uh, you know, a couple of sack lunches or sack dinners to take home uh, to your family and enjoy our, our dance party. Uh, with the same thing, um, the downtown businesses are reopening. So please visit your downtown businesses. Uh, they are taking precautions. They are doing all kinds of things to, uh, to keep you safe, uh, and, but they need you to shop with them. Uh, this time period has been particularly difficult for our small businesses here in Bedford. Uh, you know, they, they aren't like your chains where they can, they can survive something like this. They need your patronage and they need it now. So think about what you can uh, go down there and, and patronize. Uh, if you had not heard, and it's been the talk of the town, uh, we actually just had a wine boutique open up in downtown, and it is a very nice place. And yes, I mean, you can go in, you can go tasting, you can buy wine, uh, and they also uh, um, host private parties. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. It's, it's an excellent place. I was there. I enjoyed it. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have... We have a... Um, Need for volunteers at Bedford Downtown Alliance. I know that the world has been turned upside down and everybody's kind of uh, discombobulated, uh, but it's, it's really time that we started to come back to uh, build things that make us a community. And that means volunteering. We have several projects for the Bedford Downtown Alliance that need volunteers that don't need you to come anywhere. Uh, we uh, need to 
a, a, a map brochure of our downtown. We want to create a walking tour that people can do, uh, you know, socially distanced, uh, those type of things. We need volunteers for that. Uh, to, get to, find it, to go. Oh, I think my green screen is going to keep it from going, but I'll bring it next time. And uh, if you're interested in volunteering, please contact me um, at uh, either Heather at Bedford Ward 5, the number 5.com, or at my phone number 440-227-3620. Uh, and that's all for me. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, I hopefully um, I will be seeing you soon um, and maybe from six feet away. So. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's still a lot of fun stuff to do. Yeah. Mr. Saunders. All right. Well, first off, anybody watching the videos tonight, and if it looks like I'm staring at the ceiling, it's because I have the uh, the Zoom up on my uh, smart TV, which, of course, is hanging higher than uh, I'm sitting, so it does look like I'm uh, staring at the ceiling. But uh, I got a couple items that uh, of interest that have come up in the last week because partly because of the weather. And Mike, have we really ever televised or figured out what the heck's going on at Lincoln and Columbus? Because that manhole's been a geyser for almost a week now. It's got the holes in the lid, thank God, otherwise it'd blow the lid like a tiddlywink. But uh, uh, it's been geysering out. Every rain we get, it, it the sewer obviously can't uh, hold it. I know a couple years ago we found a break in that pipe uh, down by Johnson, but uh, it, it, it's really getting bad. We're going to have to do something with that. Is he here? I don't hear him. Mike, you get that? I think he's frozen again. Mike, Mike. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> oh, there Hello? he is. There you are. There he is. I'm Did pressed you? up against the window. Sorry. Um, yeah, Don, I, I know they were back out there, I think, today because they were aware of it. We did televise it last year, um, but I'm looking, I'm waiting for some more data on that. So I'll let you know. All right. Uh, another thing a couple years ago, the retaining wall fell down uh, behind B Dry. And that retaining wall used to hold all the water from the parking lot from coming into the backyards on Lincoln through that area. Well, you can imagine where that water's been going since we've got such a large amount coming through. Nobody's ever enforced putting that wall back up to hold that water to push it out towards Northfield Road. Is there a way we can get the building department to get some compliance on that? Because it's been a couple years now, and let's face it, this last week, week and a half has been unusual. And these people on Lincoln, their backyards are lakes. I'll, I'll look into that. I'm not familiar with that, but I can look into that, that property. Okay, I mean, the well, wall there, should be, there should be a record somewhere in the building department from a couple years ago. Okay. Uh, and then another quick thing, uh, how are we doing in the way of complying with the federal regulations for all our road signs and our street nameplates having to reflect the backgrounds and then capital and small letters? Because there is a deadline on that, although it was extended. Are, are we working on that or are we just ignoring it? Because it could jeopardize federal funds in the future. No, we don't. We, we, we're not ignoring it. We're not ignoring it. I can't remember the deadline to when it's extended, but I can provide that. I can get that for you. All right. I just don't want us to get caught. So because a lot of communities already started complying and we seem to still be in stall mode on that. So I'm sure we're working on it. I just want to make a reminder that, uh, that, that we're going to have to do that. And... Uh, another quick note, are we going to let the VFW decorate the square and the cemetery for Memorial Day? Even though the parade has been closed, they still want to decorate both of them. I have shared with uh, them about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, uh, they were intending on placing the flowers out at the gravestones 
and decorating on Friday. Um, so anybody that was going out throughout the Memorial Day weekend, um, if it's Saturday, Sunday, or even Monday, that the graves would be decorated. And then we, we, we told them they can do that. Obviously, you know, there's only going to be a few of them. Um, we can't have or, or promote gatherings on the square. That can't happen. Um, but they are decorating it, um, I believe, on Friday. All right. Thank you on that one. And then the last thing, you may have noticed that I voted no on the garbage fee. And I do this every year because I think it's an unfair fee because we have people like seniors, for instance, that have the smaller cans and they're lucky to have a half a can every two weeks. And then we've got other people who put out an average of four or five cans a week. And it's unfair for those to supplement those that are heavily using uh, the system. And I think there should be a better way of how we determine the fee uh, because it's just not fair for those that uh, end up not having that much garbage and others that are just really abusing it. Which of course brings us back to the Woodrow house that for three weeks has had nothing but trash out. So I hope something's being done with that one. All right, thank you, that's it. Thank you, Mrs. Spinks. Yeah. Hello everybody, hope everybody is well and safe. Um, happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, I just wanna thank Heather uh, for coming up with this virtual Memorial Day service because um, I think it's just very important for our cities to still do something for that day. And I think that's a great way of uh, doing a tribute and remembering the ones that sac sacrificed so much for our country. So uh, thank you, Heather, for doing that and uh, for the Downtown Alliance, because um, I think it means a lot um, to uh, families that have people that, suffer, that uh, perished in that. Yeah, and we um, had many volunteers who helped with that. I want to make that clear. They, they're, they're doing a fabulous job. So. I think it's great. I think it's great. And uh, thanks, Mike, to you too for what all you're doing to keep our city safe as well. Um, service department, police department, everybody, all the employees that are uh, following to uh, make this a, a very safe transaction for when we do open up. Um, with that being said, talking about opening it up, I had the honor of being at the Mazda, our brand new uh, top of the line uh, Mazda dealership um, this morning. And um, of course, it was so funny still walking in and everybody's in mask. And um, some of the salesmen um, were had their masks matched their suits and stuff. So I thought that was very nice. But uh, big thank you to Mazda. Um, it just gives me hope for that corner, for that whole uh, tour door of coming into our city from Rockside. And um, thanks to each and every one of them that um, did that. that. That was a big leap and a lot of money spent. But uh, that's a class act uh, H and it, like I said, it gives us a little bit of hope there for drawing other businesses to come in that area now because who would not want to? I mean, it's really nice. And um, a big shout out to uh, uh, my buddy Dave Barry that's also working very hard um, at the YMCA. I took a little tour there too. And um, it's a mess right now, but uh, big plans and I can't wait for that to be coming in. Today is National Museum Day. And kind of sad that our own beautiful historical society museum is uh, due to the coronavirus is not open yet. We will be, um, their employees are there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you have questions, you will, can call. But right now, they're not open to the public. Um, our Strawberry Festival, which would have been June in a couple of weeks, the second weekend of June, has been canceled. But what we've tried decided to do, because that's one of our big fundraisers, we've had to cancel our big fundraiser that was in March a reverse raffle that's always uh, uh, very successful. So what we've done is we're going to combine the Strawberry Festival and the Celebration of Art Weekend of the Puka, and it's gonna be called a Celebration of Art and Strawberries. <laughs> so there'll be artists there, there'll be the Strawberry Tent, and that is gonna be the second weekend um, 
in September, hoping that, you know, we're able to do that. We're planning that if you're interested in having a space. Um, a lot of the vendors from the Strawberry uh, Festival will be there. The artists uh, from the um, Celebration of Art will be there. So it's going to be a collaboration. There won't be the bouncy houses, but there'll still be, it'll be um, it's just a celebration. And it's so important. Um, our historical society, that museum is very, that's, I mean, that's part of our downtown our beautiful historic downtown. So if you're not a member, it's just like the Garden Club. It's so inexpensive to be a member. Those are two things that are really important for our city. Uh, thank you to the Garden Club for donation for the flyers. That's, you know, again, another corridor into our city. Um, but it's very important to do that. Um, Mike, I do have a question for you. Uh, do you have something for you? Um, the big trucks, the big car haulers are still coming down um, Grand Boulevard. I've been getting quite a few complaints. Um, and it's not, it's the big ones. It's not the ones that, that be like an Amazon that'd be dropping off a car to someone. It's the big ones. And the other trucks are still cutting through. And I've got a couple complaints even on Willard um, with the big trucks coming through. Um, also, this car speeding. Willard and Grand. I mean, it's like these stop signs mean nothing. We've got four stop signs on Grand and they mean nothing to people. They they don't stop. Some of them don't even attempt to slow down. Um, so um, also this uh, yesterday with all the rain, the heavy rain that came so quick, um, the creeks behind Cresswell got Pretty scary high. I don't know if you got any calls from anybody. Um, Mike, I saw, I didn't get any calls, but I saw posted when I was out doing my little uh, uh, ward check. It was, it's pretty high. And I know that that's part of their property, but over the years, it's just been getting worse and worse and the, with the weather being a little wonky right now. Um, did you get any calls? No, we, we had, we only received, uh, we had five calls um, in regarding flooding. I didn't get any about the creek on Cresswell, okay. um, but yeah. Okay. And for my last thing, some very exciting news. And Vic, I don't know if you know this, Mills on Wheels got a $10,000 grant from the Mills on Wheels America Foundation. So we're so excited we needed that. We had a private donor, thank you, Mike, um, that gave us a little bit because we're providing now meals for 122 clients. Excuse me, 118 clients. This time last year, we had 80 clients. And um, we serve Bedford, Bedford Heights, Oakwood, and there's another, what am I? Uh, Walton Hills. Walton Hills. So um, thank you. We're, we're good on volunteers right now because we're only delivering uh, once a week. And so what we're doing is we're delivering several meals. Um, Vic, thank you. Because uh, poor Vic, he comes out with a whole big uh, buggy full of uh, all kind of boxes. He, he does the strong arming stuff. We're also going after another grant for Meals on Wheels because we have our clients, some of the clients, have animals and you don't think about that and also you know food for animals and vets and different things so we're going after another grant to help out some of our clients with uh pets and also safe south haven their uh hunger the hunger center is hopefully going to be open back up june 2nd and they're going to be doing something like that too where we're going to be able to help some of these residents um, that are not working right now that uh, have pets. And I know they're working with some of the local veterinarians and stuff to help out with some of that. So um, happy Memorial Day, stay safe, um, and a report. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple of things. Uh, again, I want to wish a, a happy, I don't know if that's the correct term, Memorial Day to all our veterans out there. Uh, especially the uh, World War II vets and the Korean War vets uh, as they're getting older and old and uh, 
some of them are passing on, such as my dad did a couple of years ago. Um, but I think about uh, what what they did, what Memorial Day means to us, that uh, these men and women that are laying down at the cemetery that sacrificed all so we could sit and do what we're doing today. And um, my heart goes out to all the all the veterans. You may have noticed up at uh, Excelia that they're tearing down the middle building. And uh, it was quite quickly, they tore down that building. And they're, I think they're just gonna make a little park in there for the time being. Uh, so it's nice to see they are doing some active work and uh, they had that in the plans to tear down. So that was interesting to see. And uh, I'm gonna harp again on the census. It is vitally important that everybody everybody fill out their census papers and get that in the the information is secure and uh confidential so please get it in uh it's only 10 questions it takes just a few minutes to fill it out because soon uh census people are going to be knocking on your doors we've only had about 50 percent of our population uh fill out their census form it is mandatory. Again, it's safe. Make sure you count everybody that's living in your house, uh, even if they're not family. If they happen to be staying there for a reason, they are counted. It's so important because it, it goes back to federal funding we get, uh, money for the schools. It, it uh, determines how many representatives we're going to have in the uh, Congress. Uh, all sorts of things that we need to get that information and, and get it filled out. So if you haven't done it yet, please get it in. Like I say, 10 minutes online and it's done. Simple uh, and, uh, and please, it's, it's vitally important to our city. And, and one thing I wanted to point out behind me is the seal of the city of Bedford. It's a wood carving out of one piece of wood. It was done by a gentleman by the name of Wayne Holsoppel probably 25, 30 years ago. It was on display at our old city hall. Uh, it's just remarkable. If you ever get into city hall, stop and take a look. This is just a fantastic piece of sculpture. And uh, as we know that uh, Archibald Willard who painted the Spirit of 76 uh, was born here in Bedford. And uh, it, it's just a remarkable uh, piece of work. So if you ever get a chance to come around, come and take a look at it. It's, it's really something. And with that, we better get on with business. <laughs> ordinance number 9787-20. An ordinance to obtain funding from the state of Ohio pursuant to Senate Bill 310 and declaring this to be an urgent emergency measure. I have a motion for suspension by Spinks, second by Saunders. The clerk, call the roll. Benutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Meathack? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Yeah, motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Blue Hardy. Uh, Mike, you want to take this one? Uh, yes, Mayor. This is, um, as you had mentioned, the state legislature had recently passed uh, a law where they would provide um, significant dollars to state and local government or to municipal governments um, as part of the uh, CARES Act. Um, what they've done is they created a mechanism to distribute these funds and they're basing it off of the local government mechanism. Um, now, there's nothing finalized yet. It does not mean we're getting any dollars, um, but based on the mechanism, um, we would receive our monthly allocation for what appears to be March, April, and May. And that could equate to about 50 to $60,000 that would have to be spent on COVID related items, cleaning, uh, supplies, things of that nature. 
Um, but in order to do that and accept the money, we would have to pass this uh, piece of legislation. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Ordinance number 9788-20, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with CitizenServe for subscriptions, training, and implementation of software and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Spink, second by Rhodes. A clerk, call the roll, please. Minutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Rhodes. Um, I think I already did that, didn't I? That's one disadvantage doing this. I don't have our clerk sitting next to me to keep me on track. Uh, so uh, anyhow, Michael, you want to take that? Uh, yes, we are We are in need uh, of upgrading our building department software. Uh, the software later this year is going to be unsupported. And um, we're working with First Suburbs Consortium uh, and CitizenServe. Um, who will be able to provide the service. It's all web-based. Um, our inspectors will be provided tablets. Um, this, these costs are unlimited updates, unlimited support, and I believe it's uh, good for the direction of the department long-term. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Resolution number 2551-20. A resolution authorizing the city manager and finance director to adopt uniform guidance cost principles audit and administ administration requirements necessary to comply with federal cost principle, internal co controls, procurement standards, program income requirements in obtaining federal grants and declaring an emergency. That's a lot. Motion for suspension by Spink, second by Janudis. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Uh, motion for third and final by Mezak, second by Fluharty. Um, I'll take that. Uh, Frank, yeah. Yeah, in regards to the uh, federal government receiving all these funds, uh, the federal government has codes of federal regulations that have to be followed uh, by cities and so forth to uh, when they receive federal funds. And today we're looking to pass uh, seven different uh, um, uh, policies that we have updated in line with federal guidelines for federal funds only, our regular funds of the city and all that are not affected. But in regards to federal funds, we have a cash management, conflict of interest, cost principles, internal controls, program income related to federal funds and time and effort and procurement policies, all being updated in regards to regulations by the federal government and what they require. We'll be also providing these uh, policies to the uh, federal agencies that are granting funds and letting them know that uh, these are our current policies and uh, keeping in line with their regulations as required. So I ask council to look favorably on this this evening and pass that. Thank you. And clerk, call the roll, please. Judith? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? 
Yes. Saunders? Yes. Hochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Resolution number 2552-20. A resolution authorizing the city manager to sell the 2000 FL50 Horton Ambulance to Life Care Ambulance Inc. as surplus property and declaring an emergency. And I have a motion for suspension by Rhodes, second by Janudis. I have a motion for third and final. Oh, sorry. Kirk, 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 Kirk. Yep. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mesak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Now, motion for third and final. There you go. Mesak, second by Spinks. <laughs> uh, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, during the process of purchasing the new squad, which has since been in service, um, we actually checked to see what the trade-in value would be. Um, that trade-in value for the piece of equipment based on the age um, was about twelve to fifteen thousand um, dollars. Obviously, we thought it was more valuable. Um, we turned around and um, Pat Goody and our fire department sent the information out um, to other municipalities, private companies, and we received the offer of 25,000, which we believe is in line with the value. Um, and I think it's a good deal for, for us to move forward on the sale. Um, and it eliminates us trying to go through a broker and thus lowering our cost that we would get anyways. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Resolution number 2553-20. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a master cooperation agreement between County of Cuyahoga, Ohio, on behalf of the Department of Public Works regarding preventive maintenance services and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Fluharty. Clerk, call the roll. Nudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Spinks. Um, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this agreement is a standard agreement we've entered into with the county in the past. Uh, it is when we utilize them if there is um, any projects going on or if they need to use specialized equipment that we don't have. Um, most recently we've utilized the county um, on sewer cleaning, root cutting, um, using their jet piece of equipment that comes in. Um, and this is an agreement they require us to enter, enter into. Thank you. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Danuta? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mesak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Pink? Yes. Resolution number 2554-20. A resolution authorizing the execution of a mutual aid agreement by the City of Bedford, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, on behalf of the Bedford Police Department with the Board of Park Commissioners of the Cleveland Metropolitan Park District on behalf of the Cleveland Metro Parks Police Department and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension, please. By Spinks, second by Janudis. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? 
Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Sphinx. Uh, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is again a, a standard agreement, although uh, we've been providing mutual aid um, for our neighbors, um, other municipalities, uh, Bedford UH Police Department, and the Metro Parks for, uh, for years. Um, again, this is uh, just a formality in entering into this agreement. Uh, the Metro Parks have requested uh, other municipalities that they either abut to or they have parks within um, to do a similar agreement. Um, it's nothing we're not doing now. Right. Thank you. Clerk, call a roll, please. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Rose? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Ordinance number 9789-20. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Burton Scott Contractors, LLC, for the Forbes Road resurfacing, being the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and declaring an emergency. And I believe it's our wish to put this on a first reading. A motion for such. By road, second by Fluharty. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rose? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Okay. And ordinance number 9790-20. An ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to contract with Chagrin Valley Paving, being the lowest responsive and responsible bidder in declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension, or excuse me, we want to put this on first reading. A motion for first reading. A Saunders, second by Mizek. A clerk, call the roll, please. Anudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rose? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. And now it's time for hearing of citizens. Mike, do we have any uh, emails coming? We do. More than one. Okay. <laughs> Yay. I will, um, I'll read them first and then uh, one of them, a couple of them that we have addressed already. Uh, the first comment is from Jim Slifka at 130 Grand Boulevard. Um, he had two questions. Uh, one, he was looking to uh, reassure, um, or if I could reassure the residents of Bedford that Kimball, um, who's our citywide refuse company, is indeed taking the recycled materials to a center to be sorted and that they're not just be taken to a landfill um, like it was reported in the news with some other uh, communities. Um, I, I can reassure um, that those are absolutely being recycled. Um, not only did we, um, we knew that, we also reached out for verification from Kimball. They verified it. And for those of you that are wondering, we do get a report on a monthly basis to see how much has been recycled and materials and things like that. So um, it is verified that does help um, and it lowers our tonnage. So for those of you that are recycling, thank you. Um, and his second comment um, was uh, speeding on Grand Boulevard. I know Councilwoman Spinks brought that up. Um, and he talked about the workers at some of the auto dealers. Um, I did uh, send a message to Mr. Slipka earlier today, uh, and I had a conversation with our police chief uh, regarding that matter. So um, we did address both of those items. 
Good, thank you. Anything else? Uh, there was a comment, Tony Boersma, 45 Tarbell, uh, mentioned this before regarding the shutdown that uh, we would have massive disruptions in the food supply chain. It's a perfect time to start relaxing the restrictions on letting people provide for themselves, um, let up on gardening restrictions and allowing small livestock in the city and chickens following the guidelines implemented in other communities, uh, we can come together and move forward as a community. That was simply a, just a comment. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, Harry Carter, 169 Rainer Drive. Um, he, hello to all of council and city staff. He hopes everyone is staying safe during the pandemic. He had a few questions and he apologized if it was covered at last week's meeting that he missed. Um, one, he asked about the sidewalk program. Um, he heard about it last year, but did not hear of any mention of it recently. Um, he did express some concerns about Nordham, that it was littered with issues with raised sidewalks. It's very hard to walk with a family um, because a lot of them are raised every two to three houses. Uh, that it's been an issue for years. He tried to contact someone um, multiple times, did not hear back. Um, I can answer that, Harry. We, we are, uh, we did conduct our sidewalk program last year, was uh, the first year uh, that we started it. Um, we did some areas up on top of the hill, um, and we're also going to be doing it again this year, although it's not yet determined which walks. Um, those will be done. I will share that with Consul, um, but we are intending to do it again this year. Um, he did also talk about um, Nordham being in desperate need of road repair. Um, he hands it to the service department for trying their best and putting patches in, uh, but it gets torn up quickly and it gets worse every year. Uh, if there is a street that needs repair, it is this road. Thank you for your time and he, he hopes everyone stays safe. Um, I, I do know we talked about Nordham today. Councilman Saunders brought that up. Um, I, it's not in our plans to do this year. Um, I will see where it's in on the yearly list, but I will provide that to Council um, as far as our uh, engineer and our service department's evaluation of the roadways. Okay. The, the last, I, I did just receive an email um, but I don't believe it was intended for the council meeting, but I, I will share it briefly. Um, it is with, from a Jody Johnson. She lives at 686 Turney Road. Um, she talked about the flooding um, and some of the issues that she was having over at Colony Club, and she was just looking for some assistance. Uh, Jody, if you are listening, we um, that was brought up. Councilwoman Mizak brought that up. She actually uh, sent me a text message on Saturday and she, she was familiar with it. Um, and we we're working to try to get that alleviated. I will reach out to you tomorrow. She did provide her cell phone number. Um, I'm not going to share that, um, but we will communicate. Um, I will communicate with Jody and we'll try to alleviate that. So that's four comments. So, All right. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. And no further, I will ask for a motion for adjournment. Do I have a motion by Spinks, second by Saunders? Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Lou Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. And yeah, thank you all for listening, and, and I hope you have a safe and dry Memorial Day weekend. <laughs>